name's Robert West. Call me Bob. And this is another episode in our event management and information um, series here on YouTube West. This is the next to the last episode, pretty much. And this is called the After Event Analysis and Fixing Issues for the Next Time. And I'll tell you how I came about. I came about this basically from getting drunk. That's right. I once had alcohol and too much. When I was working theater in Sacramento, California, in college, we well, might have done a little drinking. And if something didn't go right at a performance, the stage managers and the stage construction guys and the sound guys and myself and others would all go to a local bar and we would discuss how well the play went. We'd usually laugh about it. But after a couple of beers, we'd do an analysis. And we'd say, you know, that might have worked better if we'd used this door instead of using that door to do that entrance during the rehearsals. Or we might say, why don't we just open up that piece of scenery another six or seven inches and then two people can go through there during the cross, during that blackout, instead of making one of them go around and running into that scene cart that's coming up. So this is called an after event analysis. Now, this is also known as a finite engineering about analysis, which a lot of you technical people will be familiar with from use in the construction industry, wastewater industry, engineering industries, drafting, and all sorts of technical areas of ex expertise other than my own. And what that means is that you're going to go back and look at a complex project like a bridge, and you are going to do stress testing on the bolts, and you're going to look at the paint job that people did, and you're going to look at the way the traffic's working on the bridge, so that the next time you build a bridge, you can take in all the faults from the last time you built a bridge. And that's what you want to do with your event. The moment your event is over, if you have time, you want to get a piece of paper, you know, you want to get your phone and pull out the notebook, or uh, turn on series and say record the following, but whatever it has to be, you want to do this right now while it's fresh in your mind. Now, if it's 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, I get it. I totally get why you wouldn't. But if you're waiting around for one or two hours for trucks to fill up while people are driving out of the stadium, you have time to look at some things to say, you know, we didn't have enough people manning the floor. Or we didn't have... Um, enough exit space, or we didn't have enough parking space, or man, I cannot believe how many people asked for a program. You know, I know I had a thousand people, and I got 500 programs, but like everybody took a program, somebody took two because a kid was in a play, and they're going to frame one of them. This is what your after event analysis is about. This is the time to discuss all the things that could have worked better together as a team and write notes for the next time. This is the time it is because it's still fresh, when the ice is still melting, where the musicians, you know, they couldn't get their gear onto the stage because you didn't leave them a path. This is the time that the rain showed up and you didn't have a way to cover the rain covers. This is the time to stop and think. And why is this the time? Because let's say you only hold this event once a year. When's the next time you're going to plan for this event? I mean, it's a one-day event. It's kind of cool and you know pretty much what you're doing. You know, and you know you're going to hold it every June, so it's probably not going to rain, but it could. You know, and when is it that you're going to plan for this event, right? Well, you're going to go and get your permits in March. So you're going to start planning March of next year. So between June and March, that's about nine months that you're not going to think about this event, which means everything that went wrong that you aren't writing down by now is probably not going to come up again in March when you have your pre-planning meeting with your staff. That's right. You have this staff meeting, and you have this opportunity to put all this stuff together, but you don't have any notes from last year. What went right and what went wrong. So only a few things are going to pop up. Yes, somebody at the meeting will say, hey, dude, remember when you screwed up and you didn't get enough hot dogs? Uh-huh. No. You'll have a piece of paper, and in that meeting, you'll be able to go, okay, I have ten items I want to go over from last year. Last year... We didn't have an aisle way from where the trucks unloaded to the stage. That was dumb. This year, can we factor in an aisle way? Okay, who's going to take out our plot plan? All right, take out the plot plan. All right, you're going to figure out where to put an aisle way. Okay, cool. Item number two. And you're going to go through this list. It's called your after event analysis. Everything that went right, if you want. Everything that went wrong. Things you could do differently. Ideas you'll have for next year. And you'll be able to say, wow. 
this is cool. This is really freaking helpful. Why didn't I do this before? After that event analysis is over, you're done. You're calm. You're cool. You're collected. If by this point you're still with me watching these videos, let's just recap a lot of things. Let's talk about, remember when you were doing your site visits and your timelines? Remember when you were looking back at how much you were going to budget? That part probably didn't go so well for some of you because I don't know a lot about budgeting, but my point is, is that you've gotten to the end of this event, you've gotten to the end of these videos, and you go, what have I learned? I'm hoping that you've learned something. I'm hoping that you've heard something. I'm hoping that you saw something. But more importantly, I'm hoping that one little item will make a difference to make your life and your events easier. Your time as a volunteer easier. Your time as a coordinator to be ahead of the job, to make that part of your world easier, more helpful, more understanding of the type of people that you want to work with and how to work together as a team because this has been your opportunity. This is your chance to come and ask people like myself and others who do events, you know, on a regular basis, not me necessarily because I don't do events, I just film them, but, well, at least I just film them now, but to find out what it is that helps you along. The universe is a great place. It's full of mages and sages and speakers and talent and, and people wandering along. And some of them have good ideas and some of them don't. You may find the way I do things repulsive half the time. But if one good idea came out of this event management series, I'm hoping it helps. So you've gone through this whole thing, and I've been incredibly serious about phones, and I've been incredibly serious about radios, and I've been incredibly serious about, you know, making sure people are safe, and I've been thinking about doing a fire extinguisher video, and I'm probably going to do one of those. But before we talk about some on-site stuff, maybe later, it doesn't matter what it has to be, I want you to remember the most important thing of all. That despite what I've told you, that doesn't mean that you can't have fun. <laughs> have fun. Do something cool when you're at these events. I'm not stupid, but cool, but have fun. I can tell you in my life that I've done thousands of events. And I have done some really cool things that some people will never get to do, at least in my eyes, that I thought were really cool. When I was younger, I got to meet Medal of Honor winners from World War II, and I got to drive them around on a PT boat on San Francisco Bay. How cool was that? I got to fly with members of the United States Air Force out of Travis Air Force Base and fly down to Lompoc. How cool was that? I got to tour the USS Missouri for nothing. How cool was that? done that a couple of times actually. I got to fly across the country and I got to go to a museum in Chicago and I got to see really cool cars and artwork and a German submarine. How cool was that? I was once backstage at a strip show and I got to feel up a Playboy Bunny's breast. How cool was that that you just don't get to do? I played ping pong with Phil Collins. I cooked steaks with Juice Newton. Um, you know, I just, I've met People, Joe Walsh, Peter Frampton, Stevie Nicks, and I've worked for people like the Drifters and the Coasters and the Safaris and Eddie Cole, and you know, it just, I can't tell you how many cool stage moments I had. One time during a blackout, I had to run out on stage and fix this microphone, and I was standing on the edge of the stage looking at a couple thousand people going, wow, this is really cool. It was really cool, you know, I've got hats given to me, I've gotten cool shirts given to me, I've, you know, I've been to the, I don't know how many historic naval ships, naval bases, museums of all types from New Orleans, I've traveled on paddle wheelers to battlefields, you know, it's, it just, all these places are really cool, I've met some really wonderful fire performances and 
performers in Northern California. They're really cool. I want to film them again. They're really nice people. You know, it's just incredible. I've seen strange and wonderful things. And you can too doing these events. You can meet new people. You can boldly go where you have never gone before and have these opportunities and have fun within the trade-off of doing what you agreed to do to get you there. And these steps to the universe will lead you to more fun. And I can only tell you that in all of my actions, good or bad, you know, because some people might be seeing these videos and going, oh, yeah, I know that guy. <clears throat> I've had a great time. I love doing theater and events. I, I didn't end up doing it as a full-time career for the rest of my life, but as you can see I'm, see, I'm still doing video. I've always been doing photography. I'm a published photographer. I've been paid to shoot pictures. I've had my stuff in newspapers and magazines across the United States. It's, it's awesome. The stuff on my wall that you can't see, you know, some people wouldn't believe. My, my wife's a recognized photographer. I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. I've had fun, but when it's time to do the work, do the work. It's not just about all the things that can go wrong, because when you walk away from a minute and everything went right, and nobody got hurt, you're like, wow, that was really cool. We got, you know, 60 ships in there that were anywhere from 30 feet to 175 feet. We got them all tied up. We got all these kids through these events. They were climbing up ropes 35 feet in the air. They were, you know, flinging lines at each other. They were out there in whale boats on San Francisco Bay. And they were, we had to feed them. We had to dance. There was no fighting. It just whatever that event was, when it got done and it, it went well, we would get done and we would go, God, this is just great. We had a really good time. You can have a really good time. You can do the really good things. Have fun. Just do your job. The world will turn and the fun will present itself. There will be a moment in time when you will look into somebody's eye and go, that was cool, man. That was awesome. I wish, I wish during my lifetime sometimes that I had taken more pictures of the work I was doing and, and you know, gotten more signatures other than what you've seen in these little kind of sliding presentations of the emblems and the shirts and the stuff in my background video, but, but I didn't. I didn't have time on the events to carry a camera around and take pictures of talent and, and, and get all this stuff backstage. I was too busy plugging in wires or lugging equipment or running a follow spot or and I was never really the top dog at Sacramento Theatrical Lighting. I was just another guy. I was just another guy carrying cases, you know, for the theater company when I was in a booth most of the time. I was like, I was backstage once for, you know, Christmas Carol. But it was David DeBerry's Christmas Carol. It was a musical version of Christmas Carol. It's something I only did once every three years. And, and he was only alive for a certain amount of time. And you're just going, God, what a great performance to be on. And what a... What a moment in time to be doing any Get Your Gun with, you know, 90 other people on the Sacramento City College stage in 1981. What a great time to be alive and to have these opportunities. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to go to Bonneville this year. This is a land speed record. And I'm thinking to myself, what a great, what a great opportunity. How cool. This is your time to do things for free by volunteering or by being an event manager, whatever it is. And in these times, in these systems, take a moment, just a moment, breathe, push it all out and go, this is really cool. Because if you can't find that one fleeting moment in an event, you should probably really reconsider why you're doing it. At least, I think you should. Have fun, be cool, enjoy. Thank you very much for watching this video on event management and information series. I'm hoping that there's been something in here that will help you do your event better, or at least help you if you're just starting out and learning something important 